Welcome, friends. I'm Bill Murphy. I'm your host. And welcome to another edition of Technical Talks, our monthly webinar series, where we share information with you on projects and products, and we bring in guest speakers who are experts for their solution. I, I make a joke. Today's webinar is sponsored by <laughs> Quick Supply Company, ASP Enterprises, Bowman Construction Supply, and Cascade Geosynthetics. And that's funny because that's my employer and we are the host. But uh, who are we? Well, we have a map we'll show you here that we're across 12 states in the U.S. and, and then some. And together, together, some of our companies have been in business for over 30, 40 years. But we have now well more than 12,000 customers across those markets. And we have over 40 technical salespeople. That's outside sales, inside sales. And several of them are CPESC um, certified. One engineer, that's me, I get to work with all four companies, which is fun because we get uh, to experience all kinds of um, soil conditions, climates, rain, uh, just a whole lot of different things that uh, we deal with for priorities that we get to help solve a lot of problems and challenges for people. We are blessed with some amazing people in our warehouses and truck drivers. And I know that's been kind of a sore spot for some businesses in the US, but we're blessed. We are, we're very well staffed. Uh, there's the map we like to show, but we actually have friends in every state that's not uh, colored red. Um, all those you know, gray shaded states, we have friends that do exactly what we do in all those markets. So we're very well connected in our network. And that just means we have a lot of opportunities to connect you with the right people. If you're not sitting in one of those uh, red states as they show up on the map, uh, doesn't mean we can't help you. And it doesn't mean that we don't already know somebody who's very good at solving whatever it is you need. So whether you're an engineer, landscape architect, city, county, state government, or a contractor, or anything else, uh, we have a lot of solutions that will help you. So we're going to focus on primarily one solution today. But for those of you that are only familiar with certain parts of our business, whether it be erosion control or stormwater, uh, we do a lot of things. And there's a lot of things that show up on our website um, that we might be very good at in some markets and don't do a lot of in others, but we even have a lot of products that you won't see on our website. We are, like I said, very well connected earlier, but we're blessed to be able to offer a wide variety of tools for your toolbox. Uh, during the pandemic, we have been blessed, I say that word a lot, uh, with being very busy, you know, being essential. Our companies uh, have stayed very busy keeping up with construction, a lot of good opportunities out there, and we're hopeful that that's going to continue because it seems like there's a little bit of shift in the balance of whether it's public or private projects that are um, you know, more predominant or urgent at, the, at each moment. But we've been able to stay busy through the years, the last two years, and no signs of it slowing down. Um, as far as getting inventory, we have a lot of capacity. So when we order, we can order big. And we can take very, very large orders and break them down to very small deliveries. And that's something that we specialize in. And it's been something that you've all counted on. And if you haven't experienced yet, give us a shot. And I think you'll love it. I love working for these companies. I'm very proud of them, um, mostly because they believe in constantly improving. So we're always seeking way to do, ways to do things better. And if we try to identify an area that maybe we're not strong at yet, I promise you we will get there. If it's important to you and it's important to us, we will get there. We have some uh, super intelligent people that answer the phones in all of our locations. And if you see any of our vehicles out and about, whether it be the big trucks with the logos or our white pickups that most of our salespeople drive, um, don't hesitate to ask anybody from any of our companies questions. We love questions. So I love tapping into knowledge. And I have a very knowledgeable friend here with us today. His name's Mike Calwert. And you help us not only with that product, but with understanding the business and the industry. And one of my favorite things is you're very good on Instagram, LinkedIn, sharing your stories. And it helps people to visualize. I, I'm looking through all of your business experience and your engineering, technical engineering knowledge with corporations. But I'm going to have you tap into your why at the end of this presentation when we have time. Great. But for right now, I think I've handed over controls to you. Yes, sir. To advance the slide. You got it. I got that, it, man. Everybody, everybody at home, I can't see you or hear you, but I hope you're giving a little golf clap to Mike Cowher. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Uh, great to see you uh, and um, really uh, thankful for the opportunity to uh, present to the group. Um, you know, we love uh, we love doing this and uh, and, you know, we we try to do as much of it as possible because, like you say, that Flex MSC um, is a very visual product. I can explain to you technically 
what it is, how it works, how it relates to traditional MSC wall approach. But when you actually see uh, the befores and after, it's pretty mind blowing what you can accomplish with the system. So I love it. And I'm, before I mute myself, I'm gonna stay muted for a while. I want you to be able to just say ASP. It seems like the easiest, quickest one. I don't expect you to say four company names if you make a mention of us. Right, yeah. No, I, I, I won't mention you guys at all. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, thank you again, everyone for sitting in on the presentation. I'll, um, I'll move through this uh, fairly quickly. Um, so we have lots of time for Q and A at the end. Uh, by all means, pop your questions into the Q&A and we'll, we'll uh, definitely get to them. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit today about Flex MSC. Uh, Flex MSC is a vegetated wall system. You see the second category here, geomodular block interlocking plate system. This is really a category for those clients who can't uh, specify a brand name in their, uh, in their uh, spec. So if they're looking for a category, this is our category. We're a geomodular block and interlocking plate system. Uh, the system is comprised of two main components, so our GTX bag and our interlocking plate. And you may look at this and think, you know, what's a big deal? It's a sandbag and a clip. It's actually closer to concrete than it is to a sandbag. So I want to talk a little bit about the similarities, and then we'll get into how this is unique to all other systems in the market. So like concrete, you stack in an offsetting pattern, so you create this running bond up your wall. Our interlocking plate uh, bridges the joint between two bags so that when your subsequent row comes in, it'll center over that bag and create a good strong uh, mechanical connection. So you'll have hundreds or thousands of these connections throughout a wall, uh, much in the same way that mortar kind of or pinning locks together a block wall. Uh, we have these connections. If you want to make uh, Flex MSC green, you vegetate it. And there's a number of ways to vegetate the system, and we'll talk about that as we go. But grasses, flowers, trees, shrubs, uh, any number of ways. Uh, if you want to make a uh, block wall green, uh, you uh, paint it and then you come in and uh, a couple of weeks and paint it again. So, really, if you're designing in public space, Flex MSC solves another big problem where, you know, if somebody wants to graffiti this wall, we'll just hedge clip it and, and uh, move on. So, it saves that uh, line item in your budget for graffiti removal or vandalism, uh, it takes that out of the picture. So that's really where the similarities end. So I want to touch on how Flex MSC is unique to the rest of the marketplace. So we can be installed anywhere from horizontal, so for channel claddings and outfalls, that sort of thing, all the way up to pure vertical as a living wall. So if you're attaching it to an existing structure, uh, Flex MSC works great as a living wall. We typically see one to one, so 45 degrees to one to 10, 85 degrees. The nice thing is, is that it's the same two components regardless of your batter. So you're never uh, getting into a panic phone call with Bill saying, oh, the grading's changed, now I need a plate B with a bag C. It's always the same two components, very easy to adapt uh, on site. Uh, it has, it's able to withstand almost unlimited differential settlement. So where, where I am in the Pacific Northwest, uh, we're in a, a heavy seismic zone. Uh, and we were uh, being considered for a, a project where, uh, it was a diking upgrade, so they needed to do a flak analysis, so earthquake analysis. And they went through the analysis and, and did basically 30-foot sections of flex MSC, a block, a basket, of earthen berm, and then ran earthquake simulations from a 4.0 all the way up to a 9.0 with liquefaction. And the only system that survived the full range was flex MSE, and maximum settlement was six feet. So if you have six feet of settlement on a site, you have other issues. But a failed wall isn't going to be one of them. So it's excellent for those uh, emergency situations. But also, if you have a site where you have soft materials, in situ materials, and you're going to see some uh, differential settlement, uh, you know, if, if you see a little bit of settlement and you're satisfied that it has stabilized, it's very easy to add uh, uh, bags to the top of the wall, level it off, revegetate it, and go from there. So uh, very good for, for those uh, challenging sites. Uh, the this, this system has an ASTM design life of 120 years. So this is a permanent application. The one caveat to this is that it's vegetated within uh, 1,000 hours of peak UV. So what does that mean? So in Phoenix, Arizona, that's about a year of exposure. Uh, where I am, 
in the Pacific Northwest, that could be five to seven years or 10 years of exposure before you hit that thousand hours of peak. So our specification calls for the system to be vegetated within six months. Once it's vegetated, then it's stabilized, you'll get your full design life out of it. The system also carries a 75 year warranty, which is unheard of in the wall facing uh, biz. Uh, you know, a lot of folks are, are uh, designing to a 75 year design life. We'll actually warranty that entire period. So lots of great assurances to put in the file for your clients and, um, and for the longevity of the system. Uh, our uh, system is the only geosynthetic system in the world to have an EPD and an LCA. So this, Which is? Yeah, this is, this is a, a big deal. What are, what are those acronyms? So EPD is an environmental product declaration. And then the LCA is a life cycle analysis. So what this is, is we essentially were able to go back from right back to where the raw materials were pulled out of the ground and then processed all the way up to where it's delivered to the client. This took around a year to do. It was a, a very big challenge. You know, folks don't want to talk about the electricity and the fuel and the processes that go into developing the raw materials. And then, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, figure out how much electricity is used per plate, that sort of thing. We're, we've gone through the process, we've had it audited, and now we're registered um, internationally uh, with the governing body for EPDs. Now, if this is the first time you're hearing about an EPD, it won't be the last. It is certainly the next wave of regulations that folks are looking for. So we've seen a lot of products, uh, projects, especially in Europe and the UK, where you must have an EPD if you want to be included on the, uh, on the project. So that will come to North America uh, in the near future. It's a great analysis. And I was shocked when, they, when the governing body told us that we were the first uh, geosynthetic wall system to have an EPD. It's uh, pretty amazing. So this is something to keep in the back of your mind because when it comes up, when the uh, landscape architects or the designers are asking about an EPD, you can go, oh, I know a product that has this. Um, and that's very easy. It's on our website. You can, you can check it out. You can uh, uh, check out the uh, analysis. But like I said, it's uh, globally registered now. So um, The system uses 97% less greenhouse gas than concrete and 98.5% less than steel. So in addition to our EPD, now you've got a reduced greenhouse gas output. Uh, we use 50% recycled content. Uh, the system is 100% recyclable. So if you wanna use it for temporary works like weirs and dams, or even preload on a site. So if you're loading a site for a 24 month or 36 month cycle, instead of using uh, a concrete block, you could use Flex MSC, vegetate it, and then at the end of the load cycle, you can empty the materials from the bags, reuse that elsewhere on site, and then recycle the bag and plate 100%. So it's a very closed loop system. Um, so, you know, definitely something to keep in mind as you get into sensitive uh, projects. Uh, the system installs in two thirds of time of a typical uh, wall system and uh, comes in at 60% the cost. So typically when we're talking about something that is this green and this, um, oh, sorry, did I go back there, Bill? Oh, like you're good. It. Yeah, uh, this green and this versatile, um, you expect to pay a bit of a premium. With Flex MSC, we actually go the other way. So we can get you uh, nearly half the cost of, of other systems. So I, I wanna get into now some of the areas where Flex MSC can be used on your projects. So for things like, uh, infrastructure. So uh, Flex MAC is great for all manner of infrastructure, uh, whether it's a road widening project like this, where uh, you, you notice as they're widening the road, there's no flagging or traffic control needed. Um, we're not using heavy machinery or specialized equipment. As they're constructing, they're putting in all the services as you normally would. So there's conduit here for the lamp standards. And then at the beginning of this project, there was an environmental monitor who took clippings of the native grasses and flowers. And those were hydro seeded on at the end of the build and you're back to nature. So very easy to naturalize these sites once, once you're done. Uh, this next project here, this is a 30 foot tall four lane roadway built on the system. 
So this was an incredibly challenging system, uh, a, a project where they have a fish bearing stream. They've got this old growth forest right next to it. Um, and you know, this was originally designed to be uh, done with a concrete uh, block uh, wall. Um, they went with Flex MSE and uh, one of the things is if you were going up 30 feet uh, with a block wall, you would have had to go down six feet to lock in the toe. So lots of excavation there. The maximum excavation for Flex MSE is one foot. So we trench down a foot, deep, foot wide, you put in six inches of clear crush, and then your first row of Flex MSE and you're back at grade. So very limited site disturbance, you're not hauling a lot of stuff away. And we're also within that critical root zone of this old growth forest. So, um, you know, you're not digging down into uh, the root zone of these uh, trees here. Um, this was, there was about six feet of um, lay down space on either side of this uh, roadway. So you can see the fellow that's hydro seating is actually hanging off a crane because I couldn't get equipment down that could lift them up high enough. And then you can see the finished result looks amazing. Looks like it's been there all along. They use just the native grasses and flowers that uh, were already in the area, and it looks like it's part of the uh, part of the landscape already. Does that system have irrigation in it, or is that just all natural? This one is all natural. Yeah, wow, so beautiful. it's it's right on the west coast, so it gets yeah. uh, its fair share of rain. Uh, but um, yeah, this beautiful. is just a uh, um, uh, just hydro seeded right onto the banks, and let's go. Yeah, um, another area where we. Uh, I think I've advanced it, there you go. Another area where we do a ton of work is the uh, waterway. So anywhere land meets water is kind of an ideal uh, fit for Flex MSE. So in this situation here, this is a creek where there was a failing timber crib wall here. Uh, they removed that, replaced it with Flex MSE. You can see it freshly hydro seeded here. And the bottom left is uh, after a single growing season. You can see the grasses have come back in, you've got the shady areas, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the last uh, photo on the right here, this is a, a you know, monthly rainfall in this area where you, this little creek will get ripping, you know, uh, 15 to 25 feet per second flows and lots of volume. So the system can survive all of that and, uh, and look great. Um, so creeks, uh, you know, this example here, this is another, uh, a creek that's in a ravine. Um, they were having mudslides that were choking out the creek, so they'd have to dredge it every every spring. They decided to replace the banks with Flex MSC. They've got a couple check dams in here. They've got a little head wall for a walking path up here. And the bottom photo here is two years post vegetation. So they just cut right into the bags, put in the fern plugs, and then two years later, the system's completely disappeared. I always like to say, you know, the good thing about Flex MSC is in a short period of time it disappears. And the bad thing is, is in a short period of time it disappears. So if you, if you want to show it off, you get some good pictures, uh, make sure you show that progress. And uh, yeah, you'd never find it if you, if you didn't know it was there. So. Um, so a couple of good creek examples. This lake uh, is a great example. These folks had tons of uh, wave and wake uh, erosion happening on the shoreline. They were able to reclaim their original property line, level this lot. And the bottom left uh, photo here shows uh, the day they completed installation. So already taking some high energy wave action. You know, the system has 100% of its strength the day you put it in. It doesn't require the root pack to get stronger. It just gets stronger over time naturally. Did and you have to do some special anchoring on that? Sorry to interrupt you, but those waves look massive and intimidating. Yeah, no, sir. This is the, uh, they use geogrid in the backfill zone, but um, that's, that's it. The, the, the grid in the banks. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and then it was planted with a woody variety here too. So you can see a couple years on, these have really kind of taken over. Um, you know, these are, uh, the nice thing about these, these are, uh, look to me to be alder, but they, um, alder, dogwood, um, willows, they all have a rhizominous root pattern like grasses. So those roots are going through the face into the backfill zone, further connecting it to the to the backfill zone and just making it stronger over time. Where so, is this from that flooded project you talked you told me about? Uh, th this is uh, this is in uh, northern Washington. So this is a, a, a lake in northern Washington uh, where they uh, they, they, they uh, norm will normally see these uh, 
uh, this type of wave action. So a little wow. south of the project we were talking about, but pretty incredible. Um, other examples. So this is um, this is kind of the example example we were talking about, Bill. Is that um, you know we do a lot of these culvert headwalls and that sort of thing. The top picture. This is actually an access way to a, a gravel pit. Um, so there's around 100 B train gravel trucks that go back and forth across this every day. And this is going over a, a wetland. And this is actually shortly after installation. Now, we have other photos of this where it's fully grown in. You'd never know it was the same, same area. So pretty incredible. Uh, this triple uh, culvert, this is actually a very interesting case study. So last year, we had a devastating flood in British Columbia, where I am. And it took out almost uh, a good part of uh, a town here called Abbotsford. So mm -hmm. they have this valley that they used to be a lake and they dewatered it and they put all these farms in there. Well, Mother Nature decided to take the lake back uh, last year and it took out uh, the main highway uh, that goes from coast to coast in Canada. It, it was pretty devastating. This project here, so this is a triple um, culvert wall and the, behind it here is this company that does, that resells um, these sea cans so that you can use it for storage, that sort of thing. So during the flood, this, this is when it was being installed uh, almost 10 years ago now. During the flood, this entire area where you can see my red circle there, that's where that installation is. So you can see this entire area was flooded and underwater. The sea can business is kind of right behind this tree. This bottom photo here is an after shot you know, after everything had kind of gone down and we wanted to see, you know, what is the, uh, what was the result? There wasn't a single bag displaced and you can see the sea wow. can business in the, in the back there. So this is pretty incredible. Fleximacy is free draining. So sudden inundation and submersion like this doesn't really, uh, you, you know, weigh, uh, saturate the bags and load them. It, it, once the event is over, the, the water can uh, move away. So this is a pretty incredible example of uh, the durability of the system. And is this the same situation where you didn't put any earth anchors in? It was just the bags, the plates, and geogrid? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah, pretty incredible. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a great uh, testament. I wouldn't recommend, the, you know, putting it under uh, 10 feet of water, but uh, <laughs> if you have to, you're, you'll be golden. So uh, wow. pretty incredible. Uh, of course, the, uh, another area where we do a ton of work is uh, slopes and walls. Um, so this is our, our tallest application to date at uh, just under 70 feet. You can see one of these uh, excavators there on the uh, uh, left-hand side, kind of in the middle of the slope. Um, busy highway up top, water down below. Everything was staged off-site and then barged into the toe of this uh, slope. And they were up six feet, in six feet, until they reached the top of the wall and then drove off. So pretty incredible. Uh, we do a lot of this work on the on coastline. We do it a lot of it with rail, where you know if, if there's a slide uh, near a railway, it's usually in the middle of nowhere, very limited access. It's easy to drop Flex MSC right where you need it and start working with it. So uh, pretty incredible. Um, this example here, so. I, I don't know if you guys are like us, where we've kind of everybody's run out of that good flat usable buildable <laughs> land and they're all trying to build up the side of a bank or a mountain or something. Uh, these folks here are trying to take advantage of this beautiful view and extend their lot out as far as they can go uh, to give them more usable surface above. Uh, I talked about how these are free draining. One of the nice things about that is that we're, we don't really restrict the backfill materials that you need to use. So ultimately it's up to the engineer uh, what they want to see in the backfill. We've had projects where they've used a high plastic clay because that was the site one material. In this instance here, the backfill material you're seeing is waste uh, material from all the blasting they did on this site. So the engineer was satisfied he was getting the strike through on the grid that he needed and he approved this as backfill material. So the, the developer didn't have to haul this away and bring in uh, uh, clean fill and, and use that for the backfill huge cost savings here for the developer and uh, fine for flexibility. Wow. So pretty incredible. Uh, this next example here, let it load. This is a commercial application. 
where twice a year they'd have to shut down this little uh, path due to flooding. Um, since they've installed the system, they haven't had to shut it down. Not only is it uh, using that uh, groundwater to feed the root system, it's actually slowing it down enough so that the existing drainage can keep up with it. So pretty incredible. And above this is a parking lot, a shopping mall. There's a Walmart just over to the side, a gas station. Um, there's lots above this wall and uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. So, um, This next example, so this is, we're pretty proud of this. This is our tallest uh, application to date um, uh, for a pure MSC wall. And this is just under 40 feet tall at its, at its highest. Very tough to get a single shot of this. Uh, my friend Melissa, I don't know if she's on the call, but she was uh, heavily involved in this project. Um, the, it's tough to get a single shot of this. So we have some drone captures. So this is um, the building site for a uh, three-story 147 resident memory care home in Kirkland, Washington. So a very challenging project. There's a Vashon till, so a glacial till um, in situ materials. Um, lots of water on this site, heavy seismic presence. The engineer couldn't make block or basket work here primarily because in the backfill zone, there's an enormous uh, stormwater uh, chamber buried. So he was trying to get the 20 to 25 foot grid runs to go back and he just couldn't do it. Uh, Flex MSC follows the, the same conventions as you would with any other MSC system where it's typically 60 to 80% of the overall height embedded every four rows of lift. So every two feet of lift. The nice thing about Flex MSC being modular though, is that the engineer, instead of going every fourth row, was able to put grid in every second row or every third row. So increase the number of intervals going back without having to increase the length. And he was able to get the math to work. So this is a pretty incredible site, uh, very tight uh, constraints to the property line for some of this. Uh, and now this building, we have this uh, screen grab of early construction days. Um, where did I skip past it? Hang on here. Did I miss it? You're going. There it is. Yeah. So this is uh, just a Google grab of the first story of this building. So it's a poured pad building. You can see it's very close to the edge here. And so now this is three stories high and, and it's a finished uh, um, structure. Yeah, wow. fully vegetated. There was two really interesting um, things that happened during this build. Uh, one was they had a 3.4 magnitude earthquake and they set three rainfall records in the same week uh, during the build. Uh, the site was surveyed throughout construction and uh, there was zero movement recorded uh, throughout the build. So pretty incredible. And these neighbors here who are actually, you know, looking out their front door at, uh, or at the front uh, balcony at this wall, uh, prefer that vegetated uh, surface uh, uh, over, uh, you know, another concrete face or a, a basket face for sure. So, yeah, pretty incredible. Um, another area where we do a ton of work in, of course, is landscaping. Uh, you can snap a straight line, 90 degree corners, no problem with Flex MSC, but you can also create more organic lines or go around things that can't be moved, that sort of thing, without impacting the integrity of the system. So in this case, as a public park, they were able to create a more organic line here. Um, and you can see the before and after, they're incorporating rocks right into the, the design. Um, and it, it looks incredible. So this was formerly a uh, concrete wall here, um, lots of graffiti, but bottles broken against it. Uh, people would hop over and party in this guy's yard. So when they replaced this, they had a Department of Fisheries and Oceans. They had a lot of community groups kind of eyeballs on it. And they went with uh, this system and were able to uh, get back to nature. So it looks like it's been there all along. If you ever visit the site, you'd never know the system was there. So uh, pretty, pretty well. Um, Next slide here. So this is a, um, uh, this is a, uh, you know, they told us we couldn't do green walls in the desert. Well, this is a vegetated wall at a winery in a desert. Um, pretty incredible. It's uh, self-facing, high plastic clay backfill, you know, all those things you really want in a desert application with a green wall. Uh, I have a lot of photos of this fully grown in looking amazing. 
But uh, I like this one because you could kind of see that drip line irrigation still poking through the grass. So I always say build like concrete, finish like landscaping. So if your region requires it or the orientation of your wall requires it or the vegetation selection requires it, then irrigate that wall and you can use drip line, you can use spray head, even light frequent manual watering works great with the system until it's established and then you can let it, nature do its thing. So this is kind of where we part ways with traditional MSE systems. Typically, if you're looking at uh, designing with block or basket, you're trying to get the water as far away from the face as you can. With Flex MSE, we invite it. So we don't use supplemental drainage behind the face. You know, uh, if we see that on a spec, we ask that it be taken out. That's a huge cost savings to you, but we want that groundwater perking through the base and, and feeding that root system. So uh, great example there. Uh, this next one, this is a homeowner built project. I, I can't say enough about this. It's a 10 out of 10. This guy had never built a wall before. He had about a four foot backyard, beautiful view, but four feet and two young kids, right? So. Now he's got a 30 foot backyard with this walking path down below. Um, and he's built kind of on the edge of a ravine. So he just terraced this up over the course of a couple of years, live planted it with sedums. It's about the, as good as it gets. It, it looks uh, amazing and uh, one of our show pieces for sure. Um, this, uh, just let it load here. Um, this here, this is uh, so high end residential. I mean, these. This used to be a very steep lot with a little tiny house at the back. They raised that, pulled their building footprint out about three quarters of the lot. Uh, they got some pretty massive cedars to deal with here. They parked their cars at the top of this. Um, this was originally uh, designed to be uh, a, a segmental concrete block and they went with Flex MAC instead. And um, this is now what they get to come home to every night. And it's not just a aesthetic, it's holding the site up, you know, all along the, the left hand side here, they elevated the entire uh, building platform by uh, at least 10 feet in, in areas here. So the neighbor next door is 10 feet lower than, than you're seeing right here. Uh, pretty incredible. Vegetated, 10 out of 10. Right? Um, lead and green building. So Flex MSC qualifies for 21 lead credits, up to 21 lead credits in four different categories, which if you're building with lead, that's pretty incredible. You know, the difference between gold and platinum lead is around 20 credits. So if you have a single product that can achieve up to 21 credits, you'll really get the attention of a lead AP on, the, on those jobs. Um, these credits are available on the site. Don't worry, you don't have to squint and try to read them, but they're very... Uh, obvious things, recycled content, uh, low water landscaping, innovation in design, all those things that uh, are a great fit for Flex MSE. Uh, this example here, this is the first gold lead certified building in Canada. This is EA Games, the video game guys. Uh, this is their headquarter. So they had, they were building the new building here. They had a protected uh, bird uh, sanctuary zone over here. So they created this little uh, waterway, sorry, it, I must have clicked on it there, Bill. Uh, they, they created a uh, little waterway between the two uh, uh, areas, uh, constructed the wall. This was live uh, planted with uh, willows here. And so the process is they have a little, somebody with a little piece of rebar and a mallet um, creating a void between the bags and then someone walking along, uh, putting those willow cuttings into the face. And then you splash a little water on it, and uh, 45 days later, um, you've got uh, a pretty good result. And now these are, this was in 2006 that this uh, was built. So now you've got 20 foot tall willow stand. You know, like I mentioned earlier, willow having a rhizominous root pattern actually allows the vegetation to, uh, to further connect the face to the backfill zone. And so it's incredibly strong. And if I took you to visit this site, you wouldn't believe me that Flex MSE is there. I'd have to show you that good before picture. It's, uh, it's pretty well. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, oh, yeah, community and public spaces. Uh, so if you work in this realm, uh, there's lots of opportunity for Flex MSE, whether it's something like this, where this was a very flat playground area. So they built this structure uh, using Flex MSE rolled some core matting over top of it so it's a good soft landing and then uh, hydro seeded it. So they built the slides right into it. 
they've got a lot of their superstructure built right in, stairs, the whole bit. So pretty incredible uh, creative use of the system. Uh, this is a just over a mile long uh, sound barrier. So uh, this all used to be farmland on this side. Uh, the city decided they were going to punch through a ring road that went around the city here. And these neighbors weren't happy about that. They were going from cows for neighbors to uh, uh, tons of traffic. And so what they did is they built this uh, six foot tall, uh, mile, a mile and a half long almost, uh, sound barrier between the two. Um, vegetated it and they've got this walking path now and they don't hear each other. So it's a, a pretty incredible. As far as the sound barrier goes, we have that ISO testing if you're interested in checking it out. But I'll give you a little kind of insight if you're not familiar with the sound barrier stuff. What you're trying to get to at a sound barrier is to a one. So if you get to a one, it's anechoic. There's no reflection, there's no sound. So with the typical concrete panel walls that you see along highways and that sort of thing, those are usually around a 0.6, which means that 40% of the sound is reflected back, 60% is kind of uh, dispersed. Flex MSC, unvegetated, so just the bags themselves, uh, is a 0 0.8. So that's pretty great. A vegetated Flex MSC wall is a one. It just doesn't get any better than that. So if you're considering sound barrier applications and you want something that aesthetically looks good, is easier to install around uh, existing trees or other things, uh, Flex MSC is the only choice. So pretty incredible. Uh, this application here, so this is a, a award-winning park uh, that used Flex MSC uh, to kind of build this five-story uh, horseshoe-shaped berm here. Uh, this is pretty wild. The slope um, is dual purpose. So in the summer, they uh, have an inflatable screen that pops up here and families come and sit along the slope and watch movies in the summer. And then in the winter, it's a toboggan hill. So they, they rip down there. They had to take out a few more trees at the end after the first year, it was a little quick. So uh, they, uh, it's a little hazardous. But when you're standing around this fire pit here, you have a 360 degree view of the city. It's uh, unbelievable. Wow. So very creative use of, of the system there. Um, this application, Let's wait for it to load there. So trail systems. So whether you're punching in a new trail or you're repairing something like these folks here had a shallow slope failure, we were able to rebuild that trail, uh, reestablish their fencing and replant it with the, uh, the native ferns. Um, and it looks pretty incredible. Uh, they were able to walk in the, the bags on a uh, track to uh, walk behind here, but you can bring them in on a, uh, um, ATV or a small uh, tractor if you can fit it down the path, but um, they were able to repair this and restore it back to uh, back to nature. If you're doing a cut fill, punching in a new pathway, you know, Flex MSC on the uh, up and down side works uh, amazingly. So we do a lot of trail work and uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, application of the system. Uh, this one here, so this is a resort where when we showed up on site, it was just completely flat. And so there are uh, five different elevation changes now. Um, you can see they incorporated some of the stumps that were on site and some of the rocks, and it was a really a creative application. Above this wall is their uh, tennis courts, and the tennis players hate cracked asphalt, so this needed to be stable and uh, stay put. And uh, but they had a very deliberate planting plan in mind. They wanted it to look like the surroundings around it. Uh, you can see in the back here, these uh, condos up top, this wall that's supporting those, that's also the system. So there are five different applications that change the elevations throughout the site, and it, it's incredible. So they turned it into a real uh, showpiece, for sure. I um, want to talk a little bit about golf course infrastructure and aesthetics and some of the work we do there. Got some great examples. These guys had a um, erosion, shoreline erosion happening. And they were at risk of losing the cart path, uh, that destabilizing. Uh, they were able to reinforce that slope and re restore it here. I really like this application for a number of reasons. One is, um, you know, if they had just repaired this with a hard armor system, they would have flattened that surface and likely changed the direction of the water and maybe even the velocity. So it would have likely caused issues further downstream. 
what they were able to do here is actually restore the original shoreline, the, the profile, the original shoreline. So they didn't change the water course um, and were able to re-vegetate it with the, uh, with the materials that were there before. And now it's just disappeared into, the, uh, into nature again. So it, protecting those kind of uh, shorelines and the water courses is, is a huge win uh, for, for the system there. Um, things like bunkers. So this is a great example. We have, especially in the UK, a lot of folks who are uh, removing sod bunkers and replacing it with Flex MSC. It's much more durable. Um, you can drive your machinery right along the edge of it. It, uh, it remains vegetated, you're uh, way less maintenance. It'll take about a thousand wax from uh, Bill uh, <laughs> Murphy trying to get out of the sand. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, definitely a very interesting uh, area that, that uh, we kind of stumbled into and now it's, um, it's really taking off. So lower maintenance, better aesthetics for sure. Um, this application, so this is a, uh, the entryway going into a golf course and a fitness uh, uh, facility. So the nice thing is this the walkway up here needed to be engineered because there's lots of machinery that goes on here. There's uh, golf carts, there's all kinds of stuff. So this needed to be strong, but rather than just put a block wall here, they used Flex MSC and then planted it with the same materials you're gonna see once you get on site. So the transition from parking into this beautiful space is it already starts when you get out of your car. So it's a great way to kind of introduce people to the site and to uh, your beautiful landscaping for sure. Um, so I wanna talk now a little bit about filling and construction. So you kind of wrap your heads around what, what goes into that piece of it. Um, you could fill uh, Flex MSC with a, a pile of uh, material and a shovel. Uh, very easy if you're in a remote site or you have a small project, no problem. We have plans on our website for these filling jigs. These will allow a contractor to fill 18 units at a time using a yard bucket. So a three person crew can fill around 600 a day uh, using this method. If you need 1200 a day, you build two more jigs, you add two more people and uh, there you go. Uh, the, there's lots of sand, automated sandbag uh, machines in the industry. This one here will fill maybe 3000 a day. So depending on the size of your project, um, you can choose your, your method. We can also provide pre-filled units in, in most markets. So that's my favorite to use. Yeah, so. you, you know what? It saves all that time. If you don't have the time, the lay down area, the labor, it, it really is the way to go. And, and uh, the pre-filled units will show up on a cat uh, on a um, pallet uh, ready to go in the ground. So and I was, yeah. was going to plug in my picture into your presentation, but I didn't. I don't want to throw off your timing as I, yeah. I say, as I interrupt you, but yeah. I built our Flex MSC demo. I think we sent you guys a picture of it. Yeah. The one at St. Louis, at ASP Enterprises at St. Louis. Fortunately, when I got down there, I offered to build the wall. They already had a couple pallets of pre-filled bags. I was ready to fill them. So right. I am certified. I'm a certified installer yeah. through your website. It was a little intimidating because like any test, it's a little yeah. intimidating to take a test, but you find out right away how you did and you find out right away which answers you got correct or incorrect. Yeah. I passed it first try, but um, as a certified installer, I knew it was going to take me a little bit of time and physical labor to fill the bags. But once I got the pre-filled bags on a pallet, it went... Yeah crazy fast to build yeah. the wall it was easy it, 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 it that's you know and that's what we're finding we used to be about 50 50 half the guys would fill them half would uh get them pre-filled and now it's really skewed to pre-filled because folks are realizing they can get in and out of projects a lot quicker and move on to the next thing so in a season where you might let's just say you're going to fit in 100 projects in a season uh, now you can fit maybe 150 because you're in and out of them so quickly you can really with the same uh, crews, you could really multiply your opportunities that way. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up the, the uh, certification because um, we're the only vegetated system in the world that certifies its installers. So it, um, it's online, it's free of charge. Um, it's a super easy test. Obviously, if Bill can pass it, Ah. <laughs> it's actually it, it I, I, all kidding aside it's actually a challenging uh test we've had a lot of uh, departments of transportation kind of review it and 
you know, there's a lot of certifications out there that kind of like, oh, you know, I like Bill, he's in, and I don't like this other guy, he's out. Um, this is a serious test that will help you not only um, get a better understanding of the system so you can bid jobs in reality, but at the end of the day, you're going to have better built walls. Uh, the system is incredibly easy to construct. You just need a relatively flat base. You put down your first row of plates. You center your first row of bags over those plates. And then you bridge the joint between each bag with another plate, offset by half a bag, center, rinse, and repeat. It's really that simple. I've seen uh, professional wall builders really screw this up because they want to make everything plumb and square and, and that. Fleximacy is much more forgiving uh, than those other systems. And um, I would encourage anyone who's interested, uh, like I say, it's free of charge, uh, reach out. We're happy to set you up with the study materials and the test link. It'll be, uh, you know, a, a real asset for you and your team, for sure. Now, when I said, when I told people I'm certified, that doesn't mean I'm doing the installations. We're still just the distributor, but we have a number of our salesmen that got certified so they can talk the talk better with contractors and they can say, I got certified. So yeah. don't be scared. Be proud. I say, don't be scared. Be proud. Be proud of what your project's going to look like. Yeah, absolutely. And those, you know, that's a, that's a, one of the great things that ASP and, and uh, that group of companies can do for you is they can show up uh, and be that quality assurance for you uh, on your project and, and give you that confidence to, to construct with Fleximacy. So we love it. We love doing pre-con meetings and we love making sure that everything's going the way it's supposed to go. Awesome. Uh, as far as vegetation goes, so uh, hydro seed is still the most popular method of uh, vegetation. You can also uh, make up to three inverted T cuts for larger plugs into the uh, bags here, or up to 20 dibber punctures for smaller plugs. We'll allow 20% of the face of each bag to be cut uh, to, for vegetation purposes. If you're installing near water or you don't want to cut the bags open, you can also do brush layering where as the wall is being constructed, you're setting in your root wad in behind the face and uh, running the mature plant out between the bags. So it slows down construction a little bit, but it actually speeds up the project because they're vegetated and constructed at the same time. Uh, and this last example here, this is really interesting. So this is a, a bag that was taken off the top of a wall after about 30 days. So you see a little bit of grass and clover growth here, but the roots had already gone through the bags into the backfill zone and into the bags around it. And it's that deep root web penetration that gives you that cyclical growth. So you're not coming up and revegetating it and having to mess around with fertilizers and that sort of thing as time goes on. Once it's established, it can take on a life of its own. Uh, all of the maintenance to do with the system is around the vegetation. So we have, it's coming. Um, you know, this is, this is a great example. If, if you have a low tolerance for maintenance, this is another golf course where they have a uh, uh, cart path above this. And, um, you know, they, so this needed to be engineered. They didn't want to see a uh, rock or block or basket here. Um, so they, they, um, they opted for uh, Flex MSE, but they also didn't want to have to uh, mow it. So they, uh, they chose dwarf fescues, which only grow a few inches and have a good broad blade. And so this is what it uh, looks like, uh, very easy to maintain and, and leave alone. Uh, if you're not worried about maintenance, this is uh, Bill's house here in, in Canada. It's the summer house. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's around $50,000 worth of roses in this wall. Um, this is a very challenging site, actually. There's a, a road that kind of goes up on an angle and behind it, there's a fish bearing mountain stream that comes down on the side. Um, you know, the, and it's originally was just this pie wedge piece of property on the, on the plans. And they, they had originally intended to put a fountain here and a sign and some landscaping, some zero scape here. And, um, because we were able to bench this out, it gave them enough of a building footprint that they could actually put their show home on top of it. And so from a developer's perspective, great, they just gained an extra piece of property and uh, put this beautiful home on it. Um, this sold a couple years ago, but um, you know, I think they made out okay on this one, so. Wow. So you can imagine as a developer, you've just uh, increased your profitability on the site for another $10 million. Um, you know, the rest of the uh, buildings on this site, you can see there's some concrete block back there, there's stamped concrete here. 
this is the only purely vegetated uh, um, purely vegetated uh, lot on the whole site. And um, it, it, I, I'm not biased or anything, but I, I think it's the most beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, but it is pretty incredible. Every, every developer I talk to has a less than ideal piece of property that, they, uh, uh, that they're trying to figure out what to do with. And uh, this is a great opportunity. Um, and then finally, you get to uh, avoid situations like this where you have, um, you know, these two shots here were taken after the same period of rain. So you can see that efflorescence and that uh, calcification on the blocks. Uh, Flexibus just took all that moisture and exploded in vegetation. So you might need to mow this lawn occasionally here, but I'll take that maintenance over this maintenance any day. You know, this is a really a high end uh, development. So there's somebody out pressure washing this every couple months. Uh, keeping it looking good. Um, and then there are other systems in the market, wire, wire mesh, gabion systems that uh, are um, uh, that are meant to be vegetated. You know, there's a lot of challenges with these, um, primarily because they're still a rock-based system. And, you know, they have a little sleeve of soil in the, in the face that's meant to promote the vegetation. Well, if you don't get the vegetation right on your first try, what typically happens is, you know, if you've ever looked at your garden beds after rainy season or winter, they shrink, shrink, shrink. What's likely happened in this situation is all that soil is consolidated down the bottom of this channel. And there's no way to recharge it. They have to wait for the moss to take over or for whatever's above it to lodge over. And uh, that probably wasn't part of the original uh, design. So, you know, you get to avoid those uh, maintenance situations and, um, and you have a beautiful vegetative wall. So that's, uh, that brings us to uh, the end of uh, the formal presentation. So I'm, I'm open to uh, questions. I'll turn it back over to you, Bill. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to click, I'm going to go back. I'll go back to your slide. I didn't mean to sure. get rid of that. Um, I'm going to check on the Q and A. So we had a couple of people and Evo is a friend. He come, he attends a lot of these. But he asked, doesn't do the vegetated plugs weaken the structural support of the bags? And you mentioned allowing them to cut up to 20%. Yeah. What, what, ha what happens to the warranty or the long-term lifespan of that project? Yeah, so a great question. So what happens is that as the roots kind of grow into the, uh, the bag, so uh, the mix of materials that's in the, in the bags is a, is a blend of uh, sand and compost. So the roots will actually make their way into uh, the voids in, in that material. It's not overly compacted. There's there's lots of room to move. So the so the veget the roots are meant to go through the bag into the backfill zone that sort of thing. And as those root balls grow, they the material will just consolidate more and more over time. So it doesn't damage the structural integrity. It actually just firms up the material that's inside the bag. Hopefully Thank that you. answers the question. It does. And then on the lake, you know, Evo asked a second question on the lakeshore yeah. example. Um, and I, I asked you the question and you answered yeah. it, but maybe you could elaborate because uh, he asked it, you know, 20 minutes in. He, he's very good at asking them live, but he said, um, uh, did you use only plates and other geotextiles and geogrid or did you use something else to anchor the lakeshore? Yeah. So in, in most cases, you can do um, just the uh, geogrid and uh, the plates in the bag. Um, what we've started doing with uh, applications where you're going to see flow or heavy wave action is we'll actually wrap the face of the bag. Mm -hmm. So every second lift, grid goes in, two more, two more lifts, two more rows of bags, then the grid will cover the face and go back into the backfill zone. So we'll wrap the face. Once the vegetation is in place, it, it will cover the grid, protect it from uh, UV exposure, that sort of thing. But what it does is that if scour or wave action or flow wants to try to remove the structure, it's got to take the whole thing, including the backfill with it. So it really captures those, those rows. So yeah. two rows, wrap the next two, two rows, wrap the next two until you get to the top of the average high water mark. So we have CADs for that um, that yeah. may explain it better than I am, but we certainly have gotten away from using riprap or, or cobble for to protect against scour and, and that sort of thing. Ultimately, if water wants to move those, it's going to move them anyway. So wrapping the face really gives you that ultimate um, connection. And, and for one, years, 
structural engineers have used some wrapped face walls. We call them Brito wrapped walls yeah. or even bridge abutments. So mm -hmm. we know for a fact they can be very, very strong. Yeah. One more point on that too is that while GeoGrid is probably the most popular way to reinforce uh, Flex MSE, we actually uh, also use earth anchoring or a grouted dewy dag for rock anchoring and that sort of thing. We have CADs for all of that. Um, so you have a lot of options. If you can't excavate for a normal embedment for your grid, we can really solve that problem. We have a lot yeah. of options for how to connect the face to the reinforcement zone. Um, again, we have CADs for that. Everyone who's on the call, if you're interested in, in getting access to that technical library and seeing some of these CADs, um, I'm sure Bill and his team will reach out and, uh, and touch base with you after the call. Absolutely. And we have, we have several different anchor manufacturers that we deal with that could help supply anchors. Um, we, we deal with that on a regular basis. One of, the, one of our attendees asked, you have to have a local engineer provide the wall design. And we've talked about this before in other markets. So you do need a local engineer on, on what is it, about 40 inches, 30 inches. Yeah, so, so how it works is anything that's um, up to two feet, a uh, gravity you. stack is typically fine. Anything between two and, and four feet, um, you can use what we call our tie back uh, method. So where every second row, every second bag is turned perpendicular to the face. So it's like a dead man on a crib wall. Anything that's going to be above four feet or any wall that has loading is going to need a geotechnical uh, design. Yep. So uh, what we can provide a uh, preliminary design package free of charge. Once you log into our technical library, there's an MSC wall checklist. You provide some of the geometry information, some of the loading information, which standard you're trying to design to. And within 48 to 72 hours, our team turns around a full preliminary design package showing all the grid embedments, that sort of thing. From there, we are big fans of shopping where we eat. So if you're based in St. Louis, we're gonna find a St. Louis engineer willing to stamp the uh, and design with Flex MSE, who we've worked with in the past. And we Great. will provide our preliminary uh, information that will get them uh, the calculations they need, the, all the different information to be able to design very easily. So we can provide all the way up. If you want us to handle the whole thing, of course, there's a, uh, there's a cost for a stamped drawing as there is in every market, but we'll, we can manage that whole process for you uh, with our friends at ASP. And we'll help you for sure. Mike, do you want to go ahead and answer some of these other ones while we're on it? Sure, yeah. I'm looking at this. Uh, so George asked about the bags, uh, what the bags are filled with. So 66% uh, sand, 34% compost, with less than 8% fines overall. Yep. So that's, uh, you know, and that can be blended by volume. It can be pre-screened for you. And basically that gives us, um, you, you gives the, the proper vegetated medium for our, our uh, material. Um, if you want to use site one materials, uh, you have a good, you think you have a good compost or sand, uh, absolutely submit a sieve analysis or nutrient analysis and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. Thank good. you. Uh, cost, that's uh, uh, market by market. So you, that's definitely something uh, to reach out to your local uh, rep and, um, and then yeah. provide those costs. Paul, my buddy, Paul, thanks for the questions, Paul. Uh, do the bags work as compaction? Do the bags work as a as a compaction form when constructing the wall and slope? Compaction form. Well, I, I suppose he's meaning: Are you compacting the bags, and do the bags hold the shape? Um, yeah. I'm guessing. Now, I've used a hand tamper when I built mine. Yeah. I had a hand tamper to level them up because I wanted them to look nice. Because I'm an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. Then it, the nice thing is that when you're constructing, um, you don't want to over compact these things. Some, some folks will run a, a light a plate compactor over them just to get a uniform shape. But ultimately, when I'm building one of these, it's a hand tamper, three baps on this, and then move on. Okay, they don't need to be over compacted. It doesn't need to be uh, as perfect as Bill's walls. Uh, <laughs> it, you can really get moving quickly. I've seen guys, projects uh, work really slow because the guys are get, trying to turn them into blocks. They just really need to be uh, level easily and then keep going. So thank, thank you for the question. Uh, David, you have some questions about vegetation. So for hydro seeding, does uh, the pore size of the bag allow only certain roots to grow into? It? No. So the material, the needle punch on the material will allow roots and water to pass through. 
So for hydro seeding, um, once the seed's on there, it'll work its way through and then it'll just expand the aperture as it grows, the root grows. So it's a non-woven material, so it's not gonna disrupt the, the structure of the bag, it'll just make its way in there. And then for live staking, do you uh, have to be careful not to rip the bags when pounding follow? No, you can uh, pound the rebar right into the, uh, the bags themselves, uh, puncture that. Um, we allow for up to 20 dibber punctures. So where you're, you're actually puncturing the holes so you can put in the smaller like vine plugs, that sort of thing in there. That's so, what we did in St. Yeah. Louis. We, we yeah. plugged our bags. Yeah. Uh, Paul, another question about this size. So one bag equal to the square foot of wall face. It's, it's actually, um, so when the bag is sitting on the, the ground, yes, one square foot. What we do is if you're calculating for your project, if you have a, we always say use 1.2 bags per square foot, meaning that if you have a thousand square foot wall, plan for 1200 bags. And then once they're compacted, everything's in place, it works out perfectly every time. So don't, don't be misled if you're filling it and measuring it and you go, oh, this is square foot. Because once it gets into the wall, you get a little bit of compaction going on and that sort of thing. It's actually a little under a uh, square foot uh, of face. So 1.2 is the, is the magic number. Good answer. Uh, is it more common for a contractor to fill on site? Uh, yeah, this is a, I think we answered this a little bit on the fly, but the, um, it's, it's really a 50-50 thing. We find that actually the bigger the project, the more likely it is they're gonna self-perform. Because if you can imagine you've got a big site, lots going on, you can kind of plan well, um, someone is waiting for, I don't know, another team to finish what they're doing. There's a bit of downtime. So they can go fill bags in, in anticipation of putting them in the ground. So we had the, the major, the 30 foot tall uh, roadway we showed you, that was all self-performed because every time they had downtime, they send the crews down there, go fill another thousand bags. And at the end of it, I have a great photo of the sea of 20,000 bags uh, going off into the horizon. And that was all filled for that project. So when they were ready to start constructing, then they were uh, ready to go. And Joel just chimed in as well. We have a, um, a 40,000 unit job in Texas going right now and they're all self-performing. So uh, pretty, pretty incredible. Right. Uh, Rick, turnaround time. This is a great question. I'm really glad this came up because I failed to mention it in the presentation. We are Buy America and Buy American uh, certified. Everything that's going into the production of our materials is made in the USA. So the bags, the plates, everything is, is manufactured in the United States, which allows us to skip uh, the issues that other folks are having with waiting for material that's out on a boat somewhere. So there are a lot of systems out there where they've got things on the ocean or they can't get it out of China or they can't get it out of Sri Lanka or India or wherever they're getting their sourcing their materials. Everything that we put into our system is made in the United States. So we're really proud of that fact. And some projects require it. If you have a Buy America yeah. or Buy American uh, standard, you know, we don't manufacture a special batch of Buy America stuff. And then we have our other stuff that comes from somewhere else. This is 100% there. So turn around. We have product in the warehouse ready to go today. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, thanks, Rick, for that question. And uh, Rick had another one. Uh, can you use local produced compost? I think we answered this. Absolutely. City produced compost. Perfect. We've used biosolids. We've used peat. We've used um, gra uh, green uh, waste from grass cutting and that sort of thing that's, that's it, it, uh, been composted. There are a lot of options as far as that goes. So great question. And then the weight per filled bag. These are about 70, minimum 70 pounds each. Yeah. yeah. So um, it, single man lift, it's easy to, to maneuver these around. So. And I'm a civil engineer who works an office job and I have soft skin. And I, it was granted, it was a really small wall. But I was able to place those bags as high as six feet. So I was, I'm not telling people to do that, reaching above over their head to do it. Yeah. But on that frame that we made, that's about how tall it is. And so if you're, if you're listen, lifting, you know, a junior block, that's a hundred pounds. I mean, it's, uh, these are much easier on the forearms when you're trying to lift yeah. them around. So, uh, yeah. And you don't have to listen to a gas act all day. So it's, uh, <laughs> that's right. So I think we answered them all. Uh, yeah. 
you really knocked them out. I like that you were able to read the questions as well. Yes, and sir. Thank you to everybody that chimed in and tuned in. We still have 50 participants on here. So thanks, everyone. Awesome. We will send a link to our YouTube channel that'll have a recording of this presentation uh, or let us know if you want us to give it live. Mike and I can join you virtually. Uh, maybe our local person could bring you food. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're wide open. My team is uh, uh, focused on uh, these presentations as well. I know that Joel, uh, uh, my colleague Joel uh, joined a little late. He was already, he was on another Lunch and Learn um, but uh, he's available for any, any of the meetings if you want to introduce this to clients or the rest of your team. Um, by all means, let, let Bill and his team know and uh, we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. I love it. I love working with your team. Everybody that I've dealt with on your team, Mike, has been just a pleasure to work with, real joy. They've never made me regret inviting them to a meeting where they help talk to our customers. So anybody that we have access to, I'll share with you. In fact, you'll get a list of all these attendees today and all their contact information. Great. Yeah. Uh, we stay in touch very well. I want everybody to know that we work very well with you guys. So if you find a project opportunity in our area, you let us know. If we have any hints of it, we let you know. It's all it's all good. Yeah, it's awesome. So thank right. you everyone for taking the time. I, I, I know this is uh, a big chunk of your day that, um, you know, everybody is so busy right now. So I really appreciate the, uh, um, the, the amount of folks that have stayed on to the bitter end here. It's, uh, <laughs> we really appreciate your time. That's awesome. Thanks, Mike. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Take care, everybody.